So over the last 10 or so years that I've been a wedding photographer, I've run into tons of the, oh, don't worry, like it's a tax write-off quips from people whenever they're buying like a new piece of gear or something pretty expensive, taking a trip uh, for work or whatever. Kind of with the idea that the, that the like write-off um, is sort of a non-expense. Like in other words, uh, I think that in their mind when I'm hearing this from people, they're, they're thinking that this is just going to be a free trip or a almost a, like a free piece of gear or something. Um, and I, I wanted to make a quick video for us wedding photographers and filmmakers and kind of dispel that myth. Um, not to be sort of a, you know, dream crusher or whatever, but um, more just to kind of help you guys make better decisions when it comes to gear purchases or other write-offs for your business. Um, and just kind of like have a little bit more accurate understanding about what that means. So basically a tax deduction or a tax write-off, I'll get that, I guess, out of the way first. They're, they're, they mean the same thing in sort of the common you know, vernacular. So a tax write-off, a tax deduction, it's an expense for your business that um, you can apply against income, therefore reducing taxable income. So if you think about the overall like uh, tax formula, I guess is what it's referred to as, you have income, you have deductions, and then you have your taxable income. So income, total income, like re wedding revenue, um, portrait session fees, anything, literally any money that flows into your business. You start there, you subtract out any expenses that are business related, the proverbial tax deduction or tax write-off, and then you end up with taxable income. And that taxable income is the amount that you're taxed on. So let's start with a quick example. Let's say that for 2021, total income is $50,000. So remember, total income is any money that comes into your business. So it could be wedding, revenue, engagement shoot fees, uh, family portrait fees, even things like gear sale. Like if you're selling used gear, that amount gets lumped into the total. Um, same with print sales, book sales, all of it. So total income is $50,000. And then let's just assume that total deductions or write-offs, total expenses is zero. And I know this is impractical and n never the case, but let's just assume it's zero and it will all make sense later. That leaves total taxable income as $50,000. So remember our formula, taxable or total income minus deductions equals taxable income. So total income was $50,000, total write-offs, expenses, deductions, whatever you want to call them, was zero, meaning our taxable income is $50,000. So now we take that taxable income amount and we multiply it against our tax rate. And let's assume in this case it's 15%. So $50,000 times 15% is $7,500. That's the total amount of tax that we owe on the $50,000. So $7,500. Just remember that number. We're going to come back to it. Okay, let's change the example a little bit more. Let's assume $50,000 is still our total income for 2021. But now let's increase our deductions to $10,000. Let's say we, that, you know, that can be the accumulation of some, some gear purchases, um, telephone expense, rent expense, um, you know, whatever you had to do to outfit your studio with equipment or lighting or backdrops or anything like that. Um, even mileage and j just all sorts of things. A lot of that stuff we'll come back to in a different video, but total expenses is going to be $10,000. So going back to our tax formula, total income, $50,000 minus total deductions, write off expenses, which is $10,000 equals taxable income of $40,000. Now, if we apply that same 15% tax rate to that $40,000, it's going to end up being $6,000. That's the total tax that we pay after all the cards fall. The total tax we pay is $6,000. So you can see, now let's compare the two tax situations. In the first scenario, we had zero as our total expenses. And in the second situation, we had $10,000 as our total expenses, write-offs or deductions. Remember, these are all interchangeable terms. And in the first scenario, our tax bill was $7,500. And then the second scenario, our tax bill was $6,000. The difference is $1,500, and the only thing that changed was a $10,000 increase in our taxable like deductions, write-offs. So you can see, 
a write-off isn't necessarily a free lunch, you know, so to speak. It's really just, if you start to think about it as maybe the thing, let's, let's say that that $10,000 was just a single camera. You can see that that thing that you bought for $10,000 was really just kind of on sale for 15%, right? The difference between having it and not having it was really only 1500 bucks. So if you want to like kind of distill it down into like a really easy concept, whenever you're making the decision, should I buy this expensive piece of gear? Maybe at the, the end of the year, a lot of people, you know, make big purchases for their business at, in December because that's when they think they need to like sweep up all of the write-offs they can before the end of the year. If you really just start to think about it as, oh, this thing that I'm buying is on sale for my tax rate percentage, in this case, 15 this thing that I'm wanting is only on is on sale for 15%. That's like the the decision matrix you need to start working through rather than assuming that it's, you know, some greater percentage off. Don't just buy something for your business because you think that there's going to be a greater benefit than that. If you if you weren't going to buy it in the first place, it's just a waste of money. Some of you guys might already know this, in which case this is just been like you know, 10 minutes, I'm assuming that's how long this is going to get edited down to, I guess we'll find out later, of just kind of like, you know, rambling. But um, I think even if you did know that, it's important to remember, because I'll even get swept up in the December craze of buying things um, and then have to kind of pump the brakes and remind myself, oh yeah, that's right, this isn't actually what I think it is. So just something to remember. So now that we have our arms kind of around the big topic of tax write-offs, which we'll kind of dive into in a little bit more nuance in future videos. Um, I wanted to kind of leave you guys with about eh, three to five sort of ideas that you can implement at the end of a at the end of a tax year, at the end of a year, um, that are a bit more tactical and strategic. So let's just say we have two years, 2021 and next year, 2022. Let's say that 2021 is going to be a lot higher income producing year than 2022. We expect more income to be coming through in 2021, and we expect maybe a downtick in revenue in 2022. Maybe you're pivoting out of weddings and you're wanting to do something a little bit more commercial. You're trying something new. Maybe you're moving to a different market, you know, from one coast to another where you're sort of having to start over again. And you just, you know that there'll be a big dip in revenue in 2022. We, in that case, are more interested in piling tax deductions, if we're able to, piling tax deductions into 2021 instead of 2022, right? Because 2022, it's going to already be lower income, so we don't need as many tax write-offs to eat up that, that income and reduce our tax bill, but we need a lot in 2021. If you have a studio space or a rent, like a, some kind of like monthly rent situation going on, you can prepay at the end of 2021 all of your rent for 2022 if your landlord lets you. So what that does is it takes maybe, let's say that you were, you're gonna rent a space for $500 a month for all of 2022. That's $6,000, right? What if instead in December, 2021, you sent your landlord a check for $6,000? Well, tax deductions and income are what's called, or based on what's called a tax basis. So um, you can deduct a write-off, you can deduct an expense the the moment that it is paid, like it leaves your bank account. So even though that rent is for 2022 that you paid at the end of this year, that $6,000 is for 2022, you paid it in 2021. So you can write it off in 2021. So that's an example, that's a way of sort of bringing a 2022 write-off into 2021 and deducting it in 2021 instead of 2022. So here's another one. You can prepay self-employed health insurance for the year. So let's say that you already, like you have your new health plan picked out. You know how much your premiums are going to be every month for all of 2022. If your health insurance provider allows you, prepay all of 2022's health insurance in 2021. So you're, again, it's a timing difference, but you're taking all of the expenses that you would have you would have shelled out monthly in 2022 and you're accelerating them all into this year so you can write them off in 2021 instead of 2022. Another one, buy your bookkeeping or tax software app in 2021 instead of like 2022. This kind of, this is kind of like one of those things that I was talking about where if you already have an expense that you know that you're gonna be making, if you can accelerate it into the year that you need your tax write-off for, go for it. 
my QuickBooks uh, subscription payment is due in January every year. If I go ahead and pay them in December of 2021 instead of January 2022, I can write off that subscription payment in 2021 and use it as a tax, tax write-off for this year. Another one that's like much more wedding photographer centric would be if you, if you know that you have a lot of traveling to do in 2022 for weddings, if you are able to, if your airline lets you purchase your tickets far enough in advance in 2021, that's a travel expense that you can move into this year instead of next year, and you know, spending next year. Basically just like any, any membership or subscription fees that you can prepay ahead of time and move that expense into the year that you need the write-offs for, that's kind of a, a very tactical, strategic way of making tax deductions work for you. You basically just want to flip this whole equation around and defer things if possible if you expect 2021 to be a lower income producing tax year than 2022, which is probably in reality the case for a lot of us who are in the wedding industry. Just, you know, things are sort of de-COVIDizing gradually. Yes, that's a word, right? <laughs> and as couples feel more and more comfortable planning weddings in 2022 that maybe would have been a 2021 um, you know, wedding or something, the more that we can expect 2022 to be a higher income generating year than the current year. So maybe it's more in your favor to defer any expenses that you might have into the next year. Those flights that you have for 2022, maybe push them to January 2022 and you actually book them rather than booking them in 2021. That subscription payment that's due in January, maybe actually pay it in January. The rent payment for your studio, maybe actually wait and pay it in 2022. So you can kind of see how timing sort of changes the taxability of write-offs um, in general and how you can kind of use them to your advantage. Wow, that was a lot. Okay. Thank you guys for bearing with me. I know that tax stuff is super dry um, sometimes, but it's also just super necessary. I can't even explain the number of photographers I've met who are insanely creative and talented at what they do, but they fail at being a business owner and never get this, this thing off the ground. And I, I definitely don't blame them either. It's confusing, it's dense, um, so hopefully, this video and others like it will help you guys uh, understand a little bit more, unpack it, and figure out how to navigate the big wide world of taxes for wedding people. Thanks guys, um, appreciate your time, and I will see you in the next video. Some things that you can do at the end of 2021 this year is prepay office or studio space rent for 2022. So, Frick, no, it's backwards.